talk. I'm the new Cinderella, the black, exotic, more modern Cinderella. That girl wanted to be Cinderella bad and she was gonna lie to be her. Hello YouTubers, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well today. I am so excited about what we're talking about today. And I think it comes down to everything that started in the beginning up to what we are seeing now is really going to start making a lot of sense to people who just did not get everything that was happening with the things that we were talking about. Also, Samantha Markle is suing her sister, Meghan Markle, for several damages. Now, there are several things that she's complaining about, and I'm gonna be reading from some of it, giving you my opinion about it, because at the end of the day, if you are going to sue someone for doing harm, causing you damages, you're going to have a pretty good reason for saying that they have done this to you. Everything that had been set up to the very beginning up to now about Meghan Markle's character is really going to come out. And this is how you are going to know that the things that have been said about Meghan Markle have been pretty much on point by the things that are being said by Samantha here in this whole lawsuit. And I, I wanna say that I'm very glad that Samantha has filed this. I think it's, uh, it's very much needed at this point because I believe personally that not only Samantha, but Samantha's father, Samantha's brother, and other family members have been damaged by the lies and the fans of Megan. And I don't care how much of a fan you are of someone, if you are doing things to cause distress to the family, you're part of the problem. And that becomes Megan's problem because for one, she's never spoken out against it. And it's like, if people are doing things on your behalf and you're allowing that abuse to happen and you don't do anything about it, you're part of the problem too. And because you have certain criticisms of someone, doesn't mean you have to be mean and nasty. You know, you can be nice and just like, you know, give someone, you know, some constructive criticism, like, no, you shouldn't do that. That's not nice. There's a nice way to go about doing things, even if it's not giving someone a compliment. And that's what I've always tried to do on my channel, not to be mean or derogatory, but to say, hey, look, this is not OK. It's just not OK to treat your family like this in a way that's constructive. And like I said in my last video, if Megan were just willing enough to listen, just listen a little bit to the criticisms that people had about her and the things that she's done, she would have easily been able to like catch up on that and, and learn from it and be better. And she could have won the whole world over if she was just willing to listen. All right, so let's look at this complaint. Samantha Markle brings this action to defamation based on demonstrably false and malicious statements made by her half sister for a worldwide audience, including roughly over 50 million people in 17 countries and who've watched the Oprah Winfrey interview with Meghan Markle and her husband, uh, Prince Harry of England. And this is the, th the whole thing. All the things that Megan was able to do with getting her platform enlarged is really going to play against her because she has been in this Times Magazine article as one of the most influential people. She was on Oprah. She's in the royal family. Like she has had access to people and platforms that the most people don't get. And so this special platform that she was afforded gave her special privileges that she should have used very carefully. If you are put in a position to have something that not just everybody can have, you have to tread lightly with responsibilities not to abuse that platform. 
Samantha can't go up against this platform that Megan has. Samantha can't say, okay, Oprah, <laughs> I want to give my defense to what Megan said. You think Oprah's going to listen? No, we know she's not going to listen because she didn't even listen to Mr. Markle when he left a letter outside her production offices. So she wouldn't even give Mr. Markle the opportunity to, to, to go against what Megan is saying. And it's like, if you have this powerful platform, you can't just get up there and say everything that you want to say. You just can't get up there and say nothing nasty and lies about your family because you know unless they're going to get the other person's side of it so what you say has to be the truth you have to speak the truth because it's not right it's not okay especially because Oprah would not even give Samantha or Mr. Markle their side of the story to counter anything Megan said Samantha is saying that she has suffered humiliation she's been shamed on a worldwide scale because of this big platform. Um, she's used her powerful resources, such as that of the royal families, public relations operations to help disseminate and spread all of these worldwide lies about her and premeditated campaign that she had in, engaged in to destroy uh, Samantha's reputation, her credibility, so that they could interfere with and contradict all of the false narratives and the fairy tale life story that was concocted by Megan. Because it was a concoction of a fairy tale lifestyle. Like Prince Harry came and rescued. Megan from this really poor, impoverished life in the ghetto. That did not happen. Mr. Markle, he had a very good career as a, as a lighting director. And so Megan did not come from a, a home life that she grew up with roaches all up in the house and food, no food on the table. Like that was not her reality. You know, but she wants that to be her reality now because it makes her fairy tale look so beautiful. But it's not a fairy tale, folks. This girl was afforded so much. Uh, they go on to talk about how she was given acting lessons and dance classes and her father paid for her education. She talked about in the book, Finding Freedom, how she paid for her own education, like, like she had to work hard. You see how it's, she, Megan is trying to make it look like, like she didn't did the hard work to get to where she is. No, she didn't. Um, she made it seem like Samantha uh, was a virtual stranger to uh, her Megan and her life. And that is not true. Like we've seen the pictures. We've seen that, you know, her primary caretaker was her father. Well, you know, when Megan was with her father, his elder children would come by often. They even lived together for a period of time. So how can she claim that they were not even hardly uh, together? That that right there is a lie. It's like this this dirt deserves a huge smackdown. This all the lies and the perpetration that's going on here. See, this is why this what I'm talking about now is so good for the people who are fans, because you can actually see the proof. It's not Samantha making things up. There are letters where Megan was clearly trying to lie and say nasty things about her sister, malicious lies about her sister in emails that she had sent to her secretary so that he could take that information to the publisher or to the authors of Finding Freedom so that they could put it in their book. Because there was no way that the authors of this book, Finding Freedom, were going to know certain things. So we know all of this information emerged as part of the three-day hearing during which Associated Newspapers Limited, the publishers of the Mail on Sunday, are attempting to overturn a high court ruling that their publication of extracts from the Duchess's handwritten letter to her father were unlawful, breaching her privacy, copyright, and data protection. And so the only way they were going to know it was if Megan gave the information to a third person and then that third person gave it to the authors. And then Megan and Harry can say, our hands are free. <laughs> we didn't give any information to the authors. And that's true. But their secretary did and they gave the information to their secretary. So you see how they tried to, to, to connive their way into lie and scheme and plot and plan. All of this. It is outrageous.
Now, Megan's defamatory email to her public relations secretary, Mr. Jason Knopf, was not only published globally, like around the world globally, but it formed the basis for the full chapter in the New York Times bestseller, Finding Freedom. Yes, within that book, there was a whole chapter, chapter 12, that talked about the trouble began with Samantha Markle. Now look, anything that is in that chapter is gonna come from the mouth of Meghan Markle. Now, Meghan assumed that Mr. Knopf was her lo loyal servant and that her scheme to defame and denigrate her sister Samantha and her whole family would remain a secret. She wanted it to remain a secret, however, Jason, the public relations secretary, he gave that information up. He didn't keep no secret. He gave those documents to the courts and then all the lies were exposed. So the disclosure and dissemination of Megan's email proved that she had blatantly lied to the high profile British lawsuit people um, that the, that Megan had filed against a prominent newspaper. So she is going to lie and say that she did not give papers to the the newspaper to the authors of Finding Freedom. She's going to say this under oath. Give this to a court. Do you think she's going to lie on Oprah? OK, so after Mr. Jason Knopf embarrassingly disclosed this information, including the, the defendant's incriminating email, Megan was compelled to publicly apologize to the public to the British courts you know and she said that she was she had forgot she forgot that she had instructed Mr. Knopf to uh you know to who was going to meet for several hours with these authors she forgot she had sent them inform information she forgot she told Mr. Knopf about all these things she wanted him to tell the authors of the book Finding Freedom she just forgot now does, does anybody believe that and this is why the YouTube channels that speak out about this, people who have had dealings with Megan and know that she she says a lot of lies, it's important that they speak out because had they, had they not spoken out, Megan could have easily been able to go on this world stage and, and, and really fool the masses with the fairy tale. She could. And there are a lot of people that want to believe the fairy tale. But because we have been talking about this for so long in the little baby steps leading up to like the big train wreck, a lot of it was already exposed. And so she, you know, has been able to get people to believe the lies, but not everybody. No, not everybody was able to be fooled by the things of Megan. And I can imagine the, the pain and suffering that Samantha has gone through because if you have seen how the, the fans of Megan go after people, how they maliciously attack people on the internet, they dox them. Just imagine all of the suffering that Samantha has had to go through from people giving her death threats, people causing her so much miser misery and pain. She can't just go out and get a regular job because people are gonna hunt her down because there's, there's fanatics out there that are such big fans of Megan that they have been attacking Samantha. And all of that that people do that they think they're helping Megan by acting this way, what they're actually doing is helping Samantha's case. So the meaner you are to Samantha, the more you are helping her case. You are helping her to win. She's proving her point by the bad behavior of people out there that think they're standing up for Meghan Markle. You know, the other thing that Samantha has lost, lost um, opportunities of employment. She's lost income. You know, how is she supposed to support herself? You know, she's been caused emotional and mental distress, including anxiety and fear due to the threatening and violent emails and messages that she receives on a regular basis. Who can deal with that? Who can say that she is not suffering? You do not know what people put you through when they are very devious in their actions because they're a fan or a mega fan of someone. You know, I'm, I can only imagine the, the distress that she has come across because of the, the fans and the wackadoos out there. So, you know, Megan, you know, all she needed to do was just live an honest life and, and treat your family right. Is there something wrong with that? I mean, do you really have to just kind of live your life isolated from the people that 
used to know you and used to love you and used to do wonderful things with you? Does, does the celebrity of being a royal, does it mean that much to you that you just got to deny your whole past? Is denying your whole past really making you an authentic person? Here in America, except for Oprah, they're not really on these big platforms that people can hear her story. Like in America, this stuff is suppressed unless you're looking for it. But if you're the average Joe Schmo family in America where you just watch whatever comes up on the regular TV channel you watch, then you're never you're never going to see it. And so if you're never going to see it and you're here in America, well, of course, you're going to love Meghan Markle because you're like, wait, not just so nice. Look at the Duchess. There's the Duchess right there on TV with her hair, with her Prince, Prince Harry right there. That's right. He's Diana's son. That's that. That's that. That's that Diana's son. The one that died in the car crash. Yeah, that's her. And, and she married him. You know, and people just talking like just all oh, like, you know, she's just the greatest thing on earth because they don't hear the counter narrative. All they hear are the puff pieces by these, you know, entertainment shows that speak highly and they speak so negatively about Megan's family. And and it, it really must be so infuriating to the family of Megan's because they know the truth because they've been with this girl their whole lives. They know what she's done. The rest of the world doesn't know. Believe me, the news in America is a lot different than that in Europe and that on the channels that are on, on the uh, YouTube, unless you're looking for it and you, you have a general interest in it, you're not going to know. You're just going to see what comes across your tele. Okay. So I am, I'm so glad that Samantha has filed this lawsuit. I hope that people don't give her a hard time for filing this lawsuit because this lawsuit really was needed because of the, the actions of Megan and her team trying to suppress it and how the media is always slanting one side and that's Megan's side. And that is not fair. So people need to give Samantha, her father and her brother a break. They're people too. They want their stories heard. And just maybe, just maybe, Megan will wake up and she will see the wrongs that she has done with the power that she has been given with this platform. And she'll do the right thing and be nice to her family. Because at the end of the day, what is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? To nonsense. What a big house, what popularity, fame, millions of dollars in the bank. Is that really worth it? Is, is it worth it to, to lose your, 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 your soul to the good nature that you have within you to be for those superficial things? I don't know. I would hope that she would come around and be a better person especially now that Samantha's filed this lawsuit. And perhaps Megan will say, throw it out. I'm coming to see you. I'm sorry. And I love that. And I love that Samantha's really only seeking $75,000 um, in damages, which is not a, a lot of money. So that tells you right there, this is not about money. The fact that Megan lies about even having a sibling. I mean, imagine. Imagine if you had a sibling who suddenly found themselves so popular on the world stage and they said they didn't know you and they said all these hurtful things made up lies about you to people on the world stage. Like millions of people are going to hear them say these nasty things about you. How would that make you feel? So anybody, I mean, anybody who takes up for this woman and what she has done to her family, shame on you. Shame on you for giving this woman the out to do whatever she wants, knowing you wouldn't tolerate it yourself. All of these things that Megan has done was with the intent to destroy Samantha and her family because she did not want anyone giving the truth to the things she was going to make up. And she was going to make it up because you know what? She saw too many Disney movies. Yes. She saw too many Disney movies and she wanted to be that little fairy tale princess she saw in Disney. She was going to lie and connive her way to be Cinderella. Fact. Well, my fact. Okay.
<laughs> but anyway, I love how this is, um, she gave these accounts within this book. She said that Samantha dropped out of high school. That is not true. She said that Man Samantha, that she had only seen her a handful of times, that she had no relationship with her. Uh, she said that uh, Samantha had changed her last name back to Markle when, you know, it became a very famous name. That was a lie. Uh, Samantha had created um, a career creating stories to tell to, to the press. That was a lie. She never even reached out and talked to the son, but Megan says she did. Um, she said that she had lost custody of all three of her children. That was a lie. That she had three different fathers uh, by all of her children. That is a lie. And that she had brokered press deals from her father that Samantha did. And that was a lie. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Superman and, and, and Spider-Man. How, you know, they were always told with great power comes great responsibility. And when Megan got her power of being a world famous person and name, she abused her power. She abused her power to help tell her story. It was actually a very conniving way she did things. And she didn't want people to know that she was conniving because then if you knew she was conniving, you wouldn't look so highly upon her. But she connived and she tried to do things to keep her family down. Stay down, y'all peasants. I'm up here. I'm high and mighty. I'm famous. I can ignore you. I don't have to talk to you. I can say I never had a sibling. I never knew who that woman was. She could say all these nasty things and the majority of people will believe her because she has a much bigger platform than Samantha. Samantha wrote a book. She tried to get her story out. She wasn't mean and malicious to her sister within that book, although people thought she would be, but she wanted to get her story out. And not one person can tell me that if someone was lying on you, if someone was telling lies about you, you would do the same thing. You would try to give a rebuttal to someone's lies. And you cannot fault Samantha for trying to do the exact same thing that you would do too. give her a break. And for once, just listen to what she is saying and you'll maybe learn something that you never knew before. Maybe you'll be enlightened to the fact that, oh, maybe Megan is not who I thought she was. Oh, maybe Megan was lying. Oh. Oh, well, Megan, Samantha is not exactly the kind of person I think she is. Oh, maybe Mr. Marco really did have a heart attack. Oh, like all these revelations that come to your head. So just try to put yourself in the same position as Samantha and her father and her brother. And if you had someone that was famous, that suddenly started lying about you, how easy would it be for you to get your voice heard and to defend yourself? She has the right to defend herself. And if nobody will give her the interview that has a big platform to allow the whole world to hear what she has to say, well, then you know what? What do you do? You file a lawsuit and you say, you know what? I'm going to make you listen to me now.